by the standards of the North West anyway. <laughs> and I was, I was quite impressed to see her sort of wholeheartedly embracing corporate colours. Uh, right down to the green contact lenses. <laughs> well, I want to see that. Has anybody been watching any of the debates? Yeah, yeah. yeah. all of them. Were you struck by the same thought I was? When, particularly that Sunak Starmer one, that first one, I think it was ITV. You're a liar. No, you're a liar. Oh, yeah. You're a liar. And I thought, that's the only time I've heard either of them tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I've had meetings with Sunak. Um, <laughs> I know Keir Starmer. He has looked me in the face and lied uh, on more than one occasion. Um, but I was struck that at the Labour Manifesto launch, he used the phrase, stability is change. <laughs> Who here has read 1984? <laughs> and the phrase made me think, war is peace explains the Labour Party's position on Gaza. It is full on Orwellian. That direct lie, the serious double think. The Labour Party manifesto came out earlier this week. I've written an article on it. It's not published till Monday. That's why I've not put it on social media uh, in Prospect magazine. And um, I had a look at the Labour manifesto. And the thing that struck me is there are 33 pictures of Keir Starmer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's very big brother. And contrast that with the 2019 Labour Manifesto that had one picture of Jeremy Corbyn in it, and Emily Thornberry was in that as well. Um, and what is the point of government if it's not to change things? And I found myself in this horrible, horrible position that you do when you follow the logic, you follow the arguments, of agreeing simultaneously with George Galloway and Nigel Farage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when they say, what is the difference between the Conservatives and the Labour Party in terms of what they're offering? Mm -hmm. um, some years ago, uh, some years ago, a couple of months back, um, I was on LBC, and the, uh, the presenter was saying, you know, what, what is the difference between I said, I don't know. Yet they spend all this time arguing as if they mm -hmm. hate each other mm -hmm. and intend to do the same things. Mm -hmm. And that's where we've got ourselves into. Um, and it's often cast as radical. The things I got was not the time there, so five years. Um, smashed every target, created thousands of jobs, got homes built to a really high eco standard, didn't put a penny on the council tax, set up a publicly owned uh, venture capital fund to really start to change. Uh, it, so even the phone's applauding me. <laughs> <laughs> and was branded a radical. Mm -hmm. And you think, is what we're asking for radical? Is it radical to say that the, the, the uncontested scientific consensus is that there is human-made climate change, mm -hmm. it's going to destroy things like crop production, mm -hmm. it's going to have massive shifts in human population, and it's going to cost a bloody fortune mm -hmm. in terms of damage. So even aside from the morality, the logic is that this is a very, very dangerous thing that needs stopping. Mm -hmm. And we've ended up in this position of extreme centrism. Mm -hmm. And people will say, oh yeah, but you've got the far right and the far left, so we'll be sensible and we'll go in the middle. The house is on fire, so we'll take the centrist approach and we'll put out the flames in one room. Mm -hmm. And that is an analogy that holds for both the Labour Party and the Conservative Party manifestos. Mm -hmm. And I said the Labour Party manifesto should be renamed, not changed, but tinkering around the edges, <laughs> because that's what it's trying to do. And I don't think it's radical, by the way, to hold the moral position that genocide is wrong. Exactly. How do we get to this situation where people are excusing genocide? These problems aren't going away. We know that. It's not about 
the management of government or of incompetence matters. And I've, I've, like I said, I know a lot of these people, and I've found very few of them can offer convincing arguments or explanations for any of their policies. Um, but the numbers I was saying, Stephanie, earlier, the number one skill for climbing that ladder is not an understanding of economics. It's not a great insight into human behaviour or social psychology. It's a willingness to compromise everything to climb the ladder and form temporary alliances. Um, and that's, that's where we are. The fundamental problem we've got is the rentier economy. The stuff that we used to own, like the electricity companies, like the water companies, has now been owned by very rich people who, in effect, rent it back to us. So all these wires that carry the electricity, all the, the pipes that pump the water, they charge us basically for renting their use. The NHS still has 50 billion pounds of PFI to pay off. That's the public paying rent to very rich people. Mm -hmm. And even if you buy a house, and if you're under 35, the chances of that are really slim. Um, you know, my, my teenagers are going to be with me for some years yet. <laughs> <laughs> you are in effect paying rent on the money that you need to be able to afford to buy a house which is three to four times more expensive than it needs to be. So that's the world we've got into. And any amount of claiming we're going to change the planning laws and get a load of growth is just hogwash. Even serious non-political commentators, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, all sorts of people saying this doesn't add up, where is growth coming from? And I wrote an article a few, few months back called The Magic Growth Bunny. <laughs> which is the Rachel Reeves' policy. Um, but I think worse than that, we are facing, and I genuinely believe this, um, I think possibly one of the most dangerous Prime Ministers we've had in this country ever. Um, I think Keir Starmer and those around him are deeply authoritarian, mm -hmm. uh, willing to lie about everything. Um, Johnson was willing to lie about everything, but there was never any plan to Johnson's lies. That was just an instinct, yeah. lie. Yeah. My, my favourite one was uh, a tweet that he put out says, I voted in the local elections today. And someone tweeted back saying, there are no local elections in London today. Yeah. <laughs> so why would someone lie? There was no benefit to that lie, he just lied. Whereas a lot of these are... Um, uh, or, I think we should cut off power and water to Israel. And then two weeks later, uh, to Palestine. No, no, I never said that. Mm. You have. There's the video of you saying it. No, no, it wasn't me. Mm. And we've seen that throughout everything. Um, and you should judge people. Mm. I've always said my election campaign you should not judge people by what they say. You should judge people by their track record. Mm -hmm. And the true test of someone's morality is not what they claim or what they profess they will do. It's how they behave when they have power over others. Mm -hmm. And you should see that in any boss or any parent. How they treat their children is a really reliable indicator of how they will treat other adults if they have power over them. And the way that Keir Starmer has treated people like Joe in the Labour Party, like Holly, who was a great Labour councillor, who won a seat from the Tories in rural Northumberland mm -hmm. and was expelled mm -hmm. because she was going to vote a different way, the regional conference in Edinburgh, and they blocked me, the Metro Mayor, with a record that no journalist could find out done anything wrong. Mm. Exceptional. And, mm, no, don't want in. He's a trouble causer. Well, yeah, I would have been a trouble causer because I would have mm. told the truth. So I'm really worried about that. There's a bunch of gangsters going to be in charge. But 12 months from now, mm. they're going to be a bunch of very unpopular gangsters because mm. they won't fix any of the things that need fixing. Because they don't understand that the root cause is that pretty much everything in our society is geared towards very rich people getting richer. Mm. And the state, its role under their model, is to enable that. The fact that they took out the words, no privatisation of the NHS mm -hmm. from the manifesto, no, it didn't occur to them, it was there in the policy form and they took it out. And that tells you pretty much all you need to know, where the money's coming from from their big donors in American private healthcare. So we have a very unpopular Labour government and there's, I've got a couple of books here. This is Act Now. This is something I co-wrote with a number of people, there's about a dozen of us, I think, possibly more. And one of them is Zach Polanski, um, who I've spoken on many panels with. Uh, we've even um, shared a debating team in Cambridge when we're debating some Labour members about has the Labour Party uh, failed the working class. 
Um, I wrote the chapter on transport and infrastructure, he wrote the chapter on the Green New Deal. Um, and that's out in a few days' time, 24th of June. <laughs> and that, you won't be surprised to hear, remarkably similar to the Green Party Manifesto. Mm. Um, evidence based, stacks of economic analysis, and all the poets says it's really, really popular as well. So, by all means, have a look at that. But one of the things that, and it's going to be a Labour government, there's no doubt about that, the Labour Party is pinning its hopes on, it says, is we're going to drive growth through planning reform. Yes. Now, so, has anyone read the Labour Manifesto? Yeah, it's mostly pictures of Keir Starmer. <laughs> <laughs> and occasionally pictures of Keir Starmer with one of the other shadow cabinet members in him. And they've framed it so they look really little as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's honestly a serious level of paranoia in there. <laughs> um, but they say they're going to do it by changing planning. They've costed for 300 new planning officers. So that's about one per local authority. What do you think one plan? Who's a councillor or been a councillor? It's quite a few. So you've got an insight into this. Will one planning officer revolutionise things? No. So what does it actually mean? Well, what it means is, is we're going to flog off public land cheap mm -hmm. to have stuff built quickly with no thought of how does this integrate into utilities? How does this integrate into green spaces? How does this integrate into public transport even? Because one of the biggest the problems, <laughs> yeah, one of the biggest problems is new things get built and there is no access to public transport there. Mm. So there's some 106 contributions that will do what? Well, you basically just haggle and then get ripped off by private developers. I've seen it over and over again. So one of the battles we're going to have, and the way things are heading, then in the world you're going to have uh, a Green or Green-led coalition council or something against the Labour government that's going to be pressuring Metro mayors. Not a lot of time to speak, so I think it's going to go. Um, but we'll be pressuring them to take that model of growth at all costs. Mm -hmm. And that will be the battle, planning. So one of the things is bone up on planning law. Work with local communities, because that's where you're going to get a lot, of, a lot of support, a lot of support, and a lot of support before the next general election comes around. So whatever the result this time, we should certainly be thinking about building for it next time. Uh, in the northeast, a couple of people asking, Martin was asking, Stephanie was asking, and what we're doing, I'm building a coalition of independents and training them up. I'm a big believer in plurality. <laughs> diversity is not just diversity of appearance, it's diversity of thought, which leads, as we know, any moral culture is unstable. If you want a robust ecosystem, it needs complexity in it. And that's about bringing different ideas in. Um, and we're building and training. This is a book I wrote um, with a colleague of mine. We wrote this in six weeks after the 2017 general election. Um, and it's got a load of stuff in there about social psychology, group dynamics, um, building teams and things like that. So that's a, a basis for a lot of stuff. If you want to get that, you can find it still online. I think News From Nowhere used to stock it, if you ask them, they will. Um, or if you hold your nose, you can get it from Amazon. Um, and we're in this strange situation. So I know some of you have come from different traditions, but many of us um, were, I think we never thought we'd see the possibility of a government coming in that believed that if we all own our utilities in common and reinvest that money into better utilities, that would mm -hmm. be good for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we actually make it affordable, or heaven forbid free, for young people to be educated, that would be a public good for the long term. And of course, that made us all communists. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reminded of the quote by Helder Camera, the great South American um, priest, as he was. He says, when I gave food to the poor, they called me a saint. When I asked why the poor have no food, they called me a communist. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but we saw that, and that was, for those of you who are geeks like me, that was a new hope. And Jeremy Corbyn came along, looking like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Um, uh, right down to, if you strike me down, I should become more powerful than you possibly imagine. And we are now in the pit position where the emperor... Um, has, has taken power and we're in the Empire Strikes Back <laughs> and they've been purging and the Rebel Alliance is scattered across the galaxy <laughs> but we will discover fairly soon that Keir Starmer is my father 
<laughs> and a horde the fluffy little Ewoks <laughs> will come and defeat the stormtroopers. And yes, these lovely forest loving creatures <laughs> that are vicious. They're vicious if you get on the wrong side of them. Uh, with their primitive eco weaponry and uh, raffia work on their shields, will come out and we will have the return of the Jedi. So I think there is, there is future here. Um, so it is about winning and a huge part of that is about recognition so getting out leaflet after leaflet after leaflet all with joe's face on there um, is fantastic and joe bird's a great name isn't it i mean that's, that's like you know someone who's, who's, who's written like from an itv drama so because it's an easy to remember now um, but what it does and i'll finish on this it condemns joe to always having to wear that green jacket. <laughs> so, good luck with the campaign. It will make a difference, and the tide is gonna turn, because it's nothing to do with expectation management. When the next government does the same as the last government, it will also fail, and people will have enough. And this is the default approach to stopping the rise of fascism in Britain. That's what we're fighting for. So good luck, everybody. Thank you.